There are changes in personality and behaviour that happen in frontotemporal dementia. These are part and parcel of the condition. People with frontotemporal dementia often lose the ability to monitor their own behaviour and to judge the appropriateness of that. And that can be very challenging for others around. Just because someone can remember things doesn't mean that they're able to weigh up information that they receive and make appropriate decisions. The person with frontotemporal dementia may be very active and out and about doing everyday things, but they may have difficulty judging what's appropriate in different situations. And this includes their interactions with other people and their understanding of society's rules, including the law. These are some of the approaches we have found helpful. One of the things that I found very useful was a card that just explained the person that you're with, their behaviour, if it wasn't quite right, it looked like you might be getting into a spot of difficulty. It explained that the person has an illness. When you go on holiday, for example, Portugal, it was very handy to get it translated. If you don't speak very good Portuguese, you could show this card and uh, they would then understand. I recall there was a situation once where my wife, she approached two young ladies who were on their lunch break and they were having a conversation and she interrupted them and they were not amused. I could foresee that things were going to take a turn for the worst. So I presented this card which was written in Portuguese and it had a little face on it as well which showed the emotion. So it diffused. Very early on after his diagnosis, the doctor wrote this letter. I've only had to use it twice in all these years because it was quite a few years ago, but it's a safeguard for me he was having coffee and he had taken some biscuits from the bar. They said they'd had a meeting about him and he was going to be banned if he did it again. I brought the letter out and they were very understanding and they suggested perhaps they could remove the biscuits when he came in because he went in every day and he still does. He takes his own biscuits and they know that. He takes four and a half biscuits and they just let him. Mum, she was very mobile would like to go out to the shops, get on the bus, go into Stockport, into the town centre and do some shopping. On her way there, she would put, pick various objects up off the floor in the street. Her pockets were full of hair bobbles and you name it, she picked it up. Unfortunately, when she got into a shop, if there was something on the floor, she would also think she had found it. So she would pick it up and put it in a pocket. We wrote to the local police station, contacted them and advised them, gave them mum's details and said, if mum was to be arrested for shoplifting, she will not know she's shoplifting, she has a condition called FTD. As part of the condition, people with frontotemporal dementia can become very routine bound and find changes in their routine upsetting. And this may include eating a reduced range of foods. As carers, we've had to find ways to live around these routines. He has to have his coffee at a certain time, his lunch at a certain time. He has three walks a day. He knows exactly the routes and he won't change them. He had to go for a pre-op and it happened to be around lunchtime. And of course he was terrible. He just wanted to leave. She had an affection for apple pies. And it was bizarre because she'd never eaten those kind of things previously. And she suddenly developed this, this need for these apple pies to a degree where it had to be apple pies with each meal. If suddenly the colour on the box changed, it was, I don't want those, they're not the apple pies I always have. We would buy the, the same pies but keep the carton from the old box. And as long as that was seen, we were, we were okay. The person with frontotemporal dementia may not recognise everyday things or understand why certain personal tasks are important for their health and our relationships with each other. Sometimes explanations just don't help and the person may not be able to alter their own behaviour, so we've had to make changes in how we do things. It's still a mystery as to why she really didn't want to clean her teeth and she would not allow me to clean them for her. She tended towards very sugary foods so it became more important than ever to make sure that her teeth were cleaned on a regular basis and the mint flavour of toothpaste was just, she just 
could not tolerate. That in itself was causing her to not want to clean her teeth, as well as the fact that she didn't seem to see the need to clean her teeth either. So I researched and found there is a brand of toothpaste that is not flavoured. Mum lost all concepts of bathing and this was having an effect on her health. With the help of the GP, who I saw on my own, and also the social worker, I employed a personal assistant. The GP said to Mum that this personal assistant would be coming on her behalf. And Mum had a lot of respect for the GP. So the personal assistant arrived and because Mum was quite childlike. The personal assistant got Mum's character very, very well. And Mum would then uh, sit on the bath with the shower. The personal assistant said, come on, let's make you look like a snowman. And so Mum used to lather herself up with the soap and water to make lots and lots of bubbles. What Mum didn't realise was then she was actually bathing, but to her she was having fun and it was a game. There was an instance when um, he was adamant he wanted to go out on his own. He said, I want to get a birthday card for you. I said, right, we'll go. And I took him to the shop and I let him go in and choose a card. The following year, we'd moved on with Christmas. He gave him a present and he gave it back to me. Unopened, he didn't know what to do with it and I'd have to open it and show it to him and it still didn't really mean anything to him. It'd just get put on one side and it just no concept of celebrations and Christmas birthdays so it just becomes meaningless really. So it's, we stopped doing it. Ever since the illness onset she's been a crammer of food which obviously puts her at a big choke wrist. That's an area where we have to monitor very carefully and in the home she's um, being supervised at all times at meals. The behaviours may of course put others at risk and it's really important that those risks are assessed. And it's not just the risk of the actual behaviour, it's the risk of actually trying to stop the behaviour and weighing up what is the best thing to do. It's actually very helpful, I think, to share those risks and discuss those risks with other people, whether that be professionals or, in fact, other carers who have experienced exactly the same kind of thing. Yes, that's what part of his routine. He has three walks a day. There may come a time when I have to think of the safety aspect um, because he does have areas of pavements where he will not walk on them. He has to walk on the road. He is not very good waiting at pedestrian lights. He thinks he can nip across. He won't stop. He has to walk on the road. There are times when adaptations to behaviours can be successful, but sometimes it's actually about living around the behaviour rather than being able to change it. There isn't any right or wrong way to deal with these issues. It's about doing what you can. And sometimes it's not easy at all, but the most important thing really is to support the family and the individual as much as we possibly can. If you are worried about these types of issues, talk to your GP and ask them to refer the person you care for to the community mental health team in your area. Some areas may have specialist services for younger people with dementia. In others, adult or older age mental health teams provide this support. These teams include psychiatrists, community psychiatric nurses, therapists and psychologists.